holidays and Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff coming up, and suddenly a family member collapses. What do you do? Your entire family's in a panic, and nobody's taking any initiative to help the person that's in need. So every second counts. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about basic first aid and CPR and its importance. It doesn't matter who you are, what your job title is, or anything like that. Basic first aid and CPR is a valuable skill and knowledge that every person should know and be informed of. So, what is, CPR, what is first aid? First aid is the immediate care that is given to the victim that has fallen to an illness or injury before any professional or medical care can arrive. First aid is based off of three goals, and they are to preserve life, to, revert, to promote recovery, and prevent the worsening of any condition that the, person, that the victim has fallen ill or injured to. Um, a few statistics to show why first aid is so beneficial to be knowledgeable of is that up to 150,000 people per year could be given the chance to live if more people knew the skill of uh, first aid and CPR. First aid actually increases the survival rate by about 80%. So what do you do? The first step in, CPR, in first aid and CPR is to recognize uh, an emergency situation and evaluate the scene for your own safety. It's a priority to think of your own safety before you actually go into a scene to provide first aid and CPR because I know it's kind of harsh to say it, but it's better to preserve at least one life than lose two. Like, for instance, if there was, like, a burning car next to where somebody is and if there's a possibility that it could blow up, it's okay to not initiate those scenes and go into those situations that you can actually cause harm to your own self. Um, so, step two, um, check to see if the victim is responsive and breathing correctly. While you're doing that, you should be activating EMS or designating another person to activate EMS by calling 911. That way, professional medical care can get there as soon as possible. Step three would be actually to begin CPR. CPR consists of 30 chest compressions to two rescue breaths, and your chest compression should be um, your chest compression should be at the speed of about 30 of them for one minute. So within two minutes, you, have, you should have done five cycles of CPR, 30 chest compressions to two rescue breaths. If your CPR actually causes the person to resume breathing, but they are still unresponsive, it's important to know the uh, recovery position and how to do it. So with the recovery position, you take one hand and put on the opposite side of the cheek and take the other hand, stick it straight out, Roll the person over to where they are on top of this arm and place the leg that is furthest away from that arm over. This will aid in um, allowing the person that is a victim, if they ha are, have, for instance, OD'd or they were pulled out of like a pool or anything like that, if they were to expel any liquids or vomit from their body, that position will allow them to expel them safely and not uh, cause them to suffocate and cause more problems, basically. Um, a lot of reasons why people choose to not perform CPR, even though they are certified and stuff like that, um, is because they are afraid of like legal issues and whatnot, um, which we all don't, nobody wants to be sued for anything like that. But a good thing to remember is that there is a law that is in effect called the Good Samaritan Law. Um, one thing about the Good Samaritan Law is that you are not entitled to perform any care that you do not want to, unless you have like a job title, like a nurse or something that care like that is in your job description. Um, a few things to remember about the Good Samaritan Law to make sure that it stays valid is that you should never accept any compensation for care of your duties, like receiving money or anything like that. Um, if you do, then the Good Samaritan Law is no longer in effect. Um, another thing is that once you begin to perform care on a, on a victim, you are entitled to stay there. You are not alone. You cannot abandon them or anything that would be called neglect. And then uh, a big important thing is that do not perform any care outside of your scope of training. 
only perform the care that the CPR certification um, provides you with. And um, so take action, be prepared. It's really important that uh, most people or everybody become certified in CPR per se, or they should know these basic skills. Um, it's really easy to become certified in CPR. You can take a class online, it's about $40. And it'll take you about an hour and a half, and it'll teach you important skills that you need to know for those circumstances that you never know are coming. Like, like I said in the beginning with the holidays, people fought, like collapsing. You don't know what to do. It's just important for everyday life. It doesn't matter who you are. So, in conclusion, being educated in first aid and CPR can be life changing. Um, by remembering a few simple steps, you can prevent. You can preserve life prevent the worsening of a condition, and promote recovery. It's a beneficial life tool for everybody and anyone capable of performing it. So 